Welcome to Quarter 3, Week 1, Science 5, Motion in Terms of Distance and Time. So when we say motion, is described in reference to the position from which the observer is viewing the motion. So in motion, there, there is always a reference point. For example, a girl leaving home to school, the reference point there is the home. Motion is also described as a change in position and is caused by a force. So everything moves because of a force. So when we say force is a push or pull, a force can slow something down or get it to change direction. A friction can also slow something down. Friction is the force that occurs in rubbing of two objects against each other. With the help and guidance of your parents and guardian, you do the activity 1, tell me. Read the poem about motion, then answer the guide questions that follow. Activity 2, blow and go. You are going to watch the video in moving a ball by blow, blowing with varying strength of forces. Then answer the questions in your activity sheets. Okay, today we are going to do an activity we call it blow and go. So our materials, we have a ball and an electric fan. So we are going to compare how far will the ball will travel using a varying force. So first activity, we will use number 1 from the electric fan. And the second activity, we will use the number 3. So meaning from moderate and to hard. So let's begin. So using the moderate force, number 1 from the electric fan, let's find out how far will the ball will travel. Ready? 5 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay? As we can see, it went to now 3 feet. Bumalik lang ng konti. It went to 3 feet. Alright? Okay, the next one is we are going to use the stronger force which is the number 3. Let's find out how far. So, a while ago, the moderate force just went to 3 feet. What about the number 3? Let's find out. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, as you can see, it went far from 10 feet. So, meaning... The stronger the force, the farther it will go and faster. The slower the force or the moderate force, the nearer and the slower. Okay? Activity 2, you are going to answer based from the video you have watched. Note, you may change the word toy car from a ball. With the guidance and help of your parents and guardians, you do the activity 3, select me. Just write the letters of your answer on the blank provided. With the help again of your parents and guardian, do the activity 4, make me. Draw an object that shows motion and reference point. Use the box provided below. Welcome to quarter 3, week 2. Why some materials are good conductor of heat and electricity? Let's find out. Heat and electricity are very important in our daily life, such as warming the house, cooking, heating the water, and drying the wash clothes. And electricity can also do things easier and faster. Most of the things need heat and electricity in order to function. With the help and guidance of your parents, do the activity one from your activity sheets. Okay, today we are going to do a conductivity test. As we all know, conductors are materials that allow heat and electricity to pass through them, while insulators do not allow any heat and electricity to pass through them. So we have here a conductivity tester. So we are going to test the cotton, the 5 peso coin, a key, a metal spoon, a wood, a scissor, and a wallet, and also the balloon. So how do we know if a material is conductor? If the light bulb turns on, meaning the material is a conductor. Are you ready? So what you are going to do is just write your answer on your paper. 
Okay, let's start. To begin with, let's test the metal spoon. Okay, if the light bulb turns on, the material is a conductor. Let's find out. So as you can see, the light bulb turns on, so meaning a metal spoon is a conductor. It allows the electricity to tra travel or to pass through them. Uh, just a reminder, if you have watched the news about a kid inserting a metal spoon from the socket, uh, and the boy was electrocuted and sadly the boy was or the boy died so never insert a metal spoon or any conductor in your socket okay because you may get electrocuted now let's try a cotton is a cotton a conductor or insulator what do you think let's check so as you can see the light bulb did not turn on so meaning the electricity do not allow or the cotton do not allow the electricity to pass through them that's why the light bulb did not turn on so cotton is an insulator very good what about this wood or stick okay let's check but before that what is your answer is it a conductor or insulator let's see very good it's insulator okay what about a key Let's find out if a key is a conductor or insulator. Write down your answer. Okay, let's check. See the light bulb? Okay, the light bulb turns on. So meaning a key is also a conductor because a key is also made from metal. Now let's test the scissors. The metal one, not the handle one. Okay, let's test the, the, the blade of the scissors. What do you think? A conductor or insulator? find out okay so the light bulbs turn on so meaning a scissors is also a metal and it's also a conductor what about this wallet okay let's test if the wallet is a uh, conductor or insulator a wallet is made from a leather let's see what's your answer first okay let's find out very good so this one is an also an example of insulator very good and lastly, let's test a plastic balloon. Okay, happy birthday for those who are having their birthday today. So let's uh, find out if a balloon, plastic balloon, is a conductor or insulator. What do you think? Okay, let's find out. So the light bulb did not turn on, so meaning a plastic balloon is a insulator. So let's now uh, separate all the materials that are insulators and conductors. So we have here the plastic balloon. The wallet, the stick made from wood, the cotton are also an example of insulator and all of these metals made from either a aluminum or any kind of metal, uh, stainless metal, are all example of conductors. Again, reminder, never insert any metals or conductor in your socket because you may get electrocuted. Thank you. With the help and guidance of your parents, do the activity 2. Give an example of conductors and insulators. Watch a video lessons about conducting heat. Just uh, click or follow the given link and answer the activity in your With the help and guidance of your parents and guardian, do the activity 3 based from the video that you have watched. Welcome to quarter 3, week 3. Material to block, absorb, or transmit light to its use. When we say refraction, thanks to bending of light as it passes through different materials. Watch the video. So as you can see, it looks like the chopstick bent, but it's not actually. When we say reflection, it refers to the bouncing back of light when it hits an object, just like a mirror. Look at the handsome on the mirror, handsome teacher. Absorption refers to material taking light and not reflecting back. Usually, those materials have shadows. When we say transmission, it refers to the passing of light through some materials. Different materials have different ways of transmitting light. 
So one would say transparent materials, it allows all the light to pass through them. An example of that is a face shield. We all know face shields are very important nowadays to avoid the COVID-19. So always wear every time we go out, especially follow the safety protocols. Also, the clear plastics are also uh, transparent. Now, why do some materials are tra transparent? Just like, for example, the face shield, we use face shield even we are or we cover our face, we can still see our way. So when we say translucent materials, it allows some light to pass through them. An example of that is a colored paper. As you can see from the picture, there are some lights that are passing through. Also is a bond paper. The question is why we, we are using translucent materials, especially in our home, we are using curtains to block some lights coming from the sun. So when we say opaque materials, do not allow light to pass through them. For example, from the picture, our hand can block the light, so our hand is an opaque. Also, the uh, module, it can also block the uh, light. So why are materials op are opaque? Just like, for example, our walls, so our walls are opaque materials, it will not allow the light to pass through them because we need a privacy in our house. With the help and guidance of your parents, you do the activity 1 and 2 from your activity sheets. Again, with the help of your parents and guardians, do the activities 3 and 4. Welcome to quarter 3, week 4, about circuit. The word circuit comes from the Latin word circuitus, which means go around. A circuit is a complete path of electricity. So here is an example of a circuit. So what are the different parts of a circuit? So we have here battery or what we call the source, the wire or the conductor, the load or the bulbs, and also a switch. Although here is we don't have a switch. If I'm going to connect the two wires, the two ends of wires, so you can see the light bulbs turn on. Okay, what is the difference of an open and closed circuit? As you can see here, the light bulbs are not turned on, so meaning the circuit is open. Okay, when we connect the two ends of wires, the light bulb turn on, so meaning it is a closed circuit. Open, close. With the help and guidance of your parents, do the activity 1 and activity 2 in your activity sheets. With the help and guidance of your parents, you do the activity three, activity 3 in your last. Welcome to quarter 3, week 5, Types of Circuit. Okay, we are going to compare a series circuit and a parallel circuit. Let's start first with the series circuit. If we are going to look at the uh, arrangement of the wires, there is only one way. So meaning the electricity has only one way going to the bulbs. What will happen if I'm going to remove one bulb?
13, 14. So, meaning, the more turns, the stronger the electromagnet. And remain, remember that electromagnet is just a temporary magnet because I, as I remove the battery or the source, you can see the stick, uh, the wire wheel or the nail has no longer a magnet. Okay. This time, can the strength of the magnet be changed if I'm going to change the power source? So we are going to use. The first experiment, we're just going to use one battery which has 1.5 volts. And the next experiment, we're going to use the two which has a 3 volts. Let's find out. Okay, let's find out how many staple wires will be attracted using only one battery which has 1.5 volts. Okay, so let's count and put it here. So we have one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 staple wires attracted by a 1.5 volt. What about if I'm going to use two batteries which has a 3 volts? Let's find out. So a while ago, using 1.5 volts, it attracted 9 staple wires. This time, we're going to use two batteries which has 3 volts. Let's find out how many staple wires will be attracted. Okay, let's count. So 9 is the 1 volt. What about the 3 volts? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 staple wires. So meaning adding the strength or meaning adding voltage will also increase the strength of the electromagnet. Okay? With the help and guidance of your parents, do the activity 2 in your class. And also, finally, the activity 3 in your activity sheets. With the help and guidance of your parents and guardians, you do the activity or enrichment activity given to you. Uh, just write the letters of your answer on the blank provided. Thank you for watching. Acknowledgement. I want to acknowledge my two daughters, Gwen Maria Lavines as a videographer and Jenmar Maria Lavines as a photographer.